Today I'm going to go over a few quick steps for commenting in Quip. Uh, since the updates to the commenting system, uh, several of you have had some questions and there's been some confusion on how to use the new system. So I'm going to try to clear up as much of that as possible. Uh, what you should notice first is that I am using the online version of Quip rather than the app, and this is on a PC. The rules for a PC hold if you're using a Chromebook or Android tablet. However, you will see a different setup if you are using either the online version or the app through a MacBook. Most changes in Quip tend to start on the PC or online version and filter down through the various versions, with Mac being the last to receive them. Because of that, several of the things I may be doing today are not yet true. If you're using a Mac or an iMac, that will be true probably in the coming weeks. So please stick with us and watch even if you're using a Mac. Okay, so you'll see that I've opened up this student's piece. It's called Mining for Gold. And we're gonna do a couple of quick edits just to let you know how it works. So you'll notice that this has changed a little bit. The bar is currently, the editing bar is currently grayed out. Um, because I have not actually clicked within the document. Uh, that is a kind of update. Uh, previous to this, the bar was always available once you open the document. That is no longer true. So to get the editing bar to open, you need to click within the document. And as you see, the editing bar now gives you the options to make editing available. You'll see immediately that there's a comment bubble off to the left that allows you, it just says add a comment. This is to add comments without color. I do not recommend doing this. It can be very easy to confuse the student when there's not a color associated with the comment that you're making. Um, and it will also save you from having to type four, five, six words of every sentence to give the student a clue as to where they are in your commenting. So we'll close that for now and we'll go ahead and we'll take a first look at this article. Now it says here, which will be subpoenaed, meaning has this not happened yet? So we'll need to highlight this. And to do that, you're going to highlight here in the paragraph as I just did, then click on the highlight icon in the editing bar and you will be given a few color options. It is not as broad as the color options you used to have. It does allow you to enter custom colors though. Um, but unless you're used to using Pantone or Adobe colors, uh, you would have to look up each of these individually or start clicking wildly. So I would recommend to avoid any issues just using the standard colors that are available automatically. So for this one, I'm just gonna start here and go with light purple. And you'll see it did not automatically open up the comment box. You have to go ahead and click on the plus sign and to notate this, I am actually going to tell the student purple and then ask him the question that I was thinking. Now, typically I would write quite a bit more about that, but in this case, since we're just doing a demonstration, just a couple of quick questions, information for the student. He knows that that is associated with the purple comment. Um, I'm big on emojis, sorry. And then I'm gonna hit send so that he receives it. And let's say I found something in this sentence as well. I'm like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right either. All right, so we're gonna go back to the highlight bar. I'm going to choose a different color, but if you notice, again, the comment bubble does not automatically open. So you're gonna click on the one, and here I would actually type in blue, and then 
make your comments. Now something I am noticing is that when I'm seeing long paragraphs, let's say that there's issues within this paragraph and I highlight the entire paragraph. I'm either going to move the paragraph, I'm going to suggest to the students to move the paragraph, something which the entire paragraph is affected by. So I go to click on the bubble, it only gives you the color yellow when you highlight an entire paragraph. If you feel the need to make specific comments on each piece of the paragraph, you'll need to highlight those individually and then click on the icon above, just as we did above, choose your color, then click on the box and say your green comment is But again, if you choose the whole paragraph, the only color it's going to give you, let me do this down here, is yellow. Now, as you notice, it did not do that when I selected the entire paragraph and there was already a color chosen. It actually backed me back out and kept everything under the green comment. So be sure that if you've decided to block out parts of the paragraph, by highlighting one sentence at a time or two sentences within the paragraph that you denote different colors for those comments so that the student understands exactly what it is um, you're commenting on. Now, the other thing I do wanna point out, which is not actually part of the commenting system in Quip, but which I am seeing a lot in reviews, is that um, students have figured out that they can now request font colors in Quip. So anytime you see a font color other than black, we need to change that back to black. So that is up here in your editing bar under text color. You're going to highlight that and just click on black to put that back. You'll notice within this particular student's uh, article that they have, they have some blue as well, but each one of these blue um, sentences is actually a live link to the student's source. So we don't want the student to lose their link to the source document. So when you see these blue links, just hover over it. If the link becomes underlined, blue suddenly has an underline, that means it's a live link. Do not change the color of those links um, or disengage the link from the comment in the um, article or story for the student because it will disable their ability to get back to their source document. Uh, and there are times when those addresses change a bit and the only way to get back to the source documents is clicking on the live link itself. So we don't want to do that to anybody. The other thing to keep in mind is when we have particularly long paragraphs, like this one here, we need to go ahead and bust those paragraphs up a bit. Now, in this case, that was a bit arbitrary, but when you're reading or reviewing, you'll see that there's usually a good place to bust a paragraph of that size into two or three paragraphs, and then we go ahead and do that on every article. So those are some quick things about commenting. Um, the other thing you wanna look for is overuse of that. So you'll see in this article, there are a lot of that's which probably need to be uh, reworded or eliminated. Then you want to check the use of to make sure they're correct for which, who, and just. Just is a big filler word, so you want to make sure that there's not a lot of just like, okay, in the document itself. Now, when those words appear as part of a quote, um, remember they need to remain they are part of the full quote and we're not in the business of editing what someone else says so i hope this helped some of you uh, with some editing um, and commenting and on how to use the commenting and highlighting tool in quip if you do have any questions please let me know i'll be more than happy to walk you through anything you're having a problem with um, so just tag me in the uh, cohort chat room for your cohort Thank you and have a great day.